Mana Safiwe. That's Swahili for praise the Lord. Um, I'm Larry. This is my wife, Joyce. Hello. We're missionaries in Northwest Kenya. We've been serving in Kenya for five full years now, and we're very excited to share what we've done with the funds given to us by Christians in the USA. We, uh, I, I grew up in Alaska in uh, construction, mining. I have a lot of experience drilling. Joyce? And, and I was a nurse at Providence for 30 years, and now we're retired and we're taking the experiences and training that we've had over the years, our God-given talents, and we're using them in Turkana, Kenya. We do most of our water drilling in the area outlined in red. Turkana County is the biggest of 47 counties in Kenya, approximately 2,473 square miles. It's about the size of Delaware. Lagwar is the county seat. That is also where our headquarters is located. Temperatures average from 80 to 105 degrees. The ground temperature is often over 150 degrees in the sun. This is one of the hotter places on earth because it does not cool down much at night and there's no winter, it's hot year round. Unlike Arizona and New Mexico, there's no winter. They average only seven to eight inches of rain per year. It's considered arid. The elevation averages around 2,000 feet above sea level. It is located just above the equator. The sun rises at 6.30 a.m. and sets at 6.30 p.m. every day. The sun shines over 300 days a year. The blue outlined area is approximately 150 miles south of Lagor. Katali is the county seat of Transnazoya County. At 6,000 feet elevation, it is much cooler. Temperatures range from 50 to 80s. Precipitation is 39 to 47 inches a year. Crops grow well there. The ministry supports nine pastors, churches, outreach, and uh, crusades in that area. When we joined the Drill for Life in 2016, the old green cable drill was worn out and tired. It had drilled 30 wells during a nine year period, uh, but it was pretty much ready for a rest. It took, we took it all apart, examined all the parts and ordered new ones. Generous supporters provided the $20,000 needed to purchase new parts from England. At that time, everything was tired and worn out. Batteries were dead, axles, clutches, and much more were broken. We were not sure if we made the right decision to serve the Lord in Kenya. The Bible says we are to take our cross and follow him. Following him is not usually easy. Eventually, the green drill was repaired and we drilled 16 more wells with it. But it was difficult to maneuver. It had no springs, could not be packed up, could not be backed up. It weighed over 10 tons and was like dragging a big boat anchor around. Here, the water had eroded a five foot deep gully along a dirt road. The road became narrow, one wheel slid in and the drill tipped over. After three days of manual digging, we got it out. Praise God, there was no serious damage to the drill. We wanted to be able to drill deep in the bush where there's no roads, and be able to preach the gospel where it had not been preached before. The Lord placed it on my heart that we needed a more versatile drill to go into these places. The Lord provided funds and we bought a fully overhauled drill from Ohio and shipped it to Kenya in a shipping container. In November 2018, we finally cleared it through customs. Three guys from Canada came to Kenya and helped us mount it on a four-wheel drive British Army truck. We made toolboxes, a deck, and storage for the welder. To date, this drill has drilled 24 holes, with 16 of them being fully operational. Now we can go deep into the bush, we make our own roads, we go wherever we need to go. 
We set up in hours instead of days. May the Lord be glorified as we share the gospel through the gift of water. And yes, this drill gets stuck crossing dry riverbeds occasionally. We put the hydraulic jacks down, we jack up the wheels, we put timber under the wheels, we do whatever it takes, and then we drive off. Sometimes we can do that in 30 minutes, whereas it used to take us hours and sometimes all day. We have breakdowns, of course, and we have many challenges. These are all learning opportunities. We are all about teaching, training, mentoring, and discipling. This all takes time and patience, but the reward pays off in the long run. The guys are doing a great job nowadays, and they really don't need so much supervision. Our Christian walk is the same way. It is through trials and temptations that we grow and become more Christ-like. Drilling is all about adapting, improvising, and overcoming challenges. Drilling is not for the faint of heart. You must have a lot of determination. Here, a rock the size of a softball fell from the side of the hole and trapped our baler at the bottom of the hole. We could not leave this $3,000 tool in the hole, nor could we afford to abandon the hole. We developed different techniques for getting it out, and we used, in this case, we used the crane of the white truck to help pull the baler out. Ah, the Bible calls it discipling, leading and showing the guys the techniques to do the job efficiently and safely. We also interwove Christian principles in our daily walk all day long. Our number one prayer is that what we do glorifies the Lord. Uh, specialized tools and parts need to be flowing in from Nairobi or USA. Part numbers don't mean much in Kenya. They want to see a sample. When the drilling operation loses tools down the hole, great dread comes down like a big gray cloud. Sometimes you must abandon weeks worth of work. When you get the equipment back out of the hole, it is a great relief. And this picture, Jackson, Franco, Gami, Etabot, and Eric are all celebrating the return of our small stem and bit from the bottom of the hole. It takes one to six weeks to drill a hole depending on the formation and challenges. The guys need to stay with the drill. Having the sleeping trailer is a big deal. Six people can now sleep here nicely. We spent three weeks fabricating this trailer and improving it so it can snap together in under two hours. Joyce painted it and it even looks better than in this picture. The side panels are all made out of 16 gauge steel. We call this our armor. The guys sleep better knowing that a bad guy can't simply slash through the metal and uh, bother them. Additionally, they are four feet off the ground and away from scorpions, spiders, snakes, and the hot ground. It cools off quickly once the sun goes down. The wide roof keeps the sun and the rain away. The tailgate keeps the goats from getting into the food. Nikolai is a godsend. He is on the far uh, right. The Lord brought him to us in February of 2019. He is a volunteer missionary who gave us a two-year commitment. He's a great admin guy, able to do surveying, meet with government permitting departments, talk to sponsors, do borehole completion reports, bookkeeping, accounting, and many other things. He speaks Swahili, English, and his native language, German, fluently. He is keeping things running smoothly while we are here in the USA. We are praying that he finds a good missionary-minded Christian wife who wants to live in Turkana so that he will stay with us for 20 years. Each hole is a project with many aspects. This board helps us to be organized and planning for the future. In spite of coronavirus, we were able to keep drilling nonstop. We never even slowed down for five minutes, actually. We drilled 17 holes this year, but because of challenging formations, only 11 produced good usable water. 
The current plan has the guys drilling Brooks Academy on November 23rd. Thanks be to God, we pray that he will be his name will be lifted up in all that we do. Here is one good story that we want to share in particular. Kakama Mission Hospital. Over the course of three years, there have been six attempts to find water for the hospital. On one attempt, we just drilled 20 feet from the edge of a river and found salty water. Some holes were dry, most were very salty. We were shocked and discouraged. We prayed and persevered. Just this last month, the team drilled a good hole with sweet, drinkable water. This 60-bed hospital that does 800 surgeries a year operated on approximately 1,000 gallons of rationed water per day. Now they have a well that can produce 10,000 gallons per day. Praise the Lord, to Him be glorified. On YouTube, there is a great five-minute video called Kakama Mission Hospital. It gives you an idea how important this project is. Oh, watching children play in the water never gets old, never. Oh, they have so much fun. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus tells us to deny ourselves and pick up the cross and follow him. To us, it means dealing with people and their needs as they come to us. Oftentimes, we look to the left and the right and are forced to admit there's no one else to meet that need. Denying ourselves often means putting our plans aside and going in God's direction. Elam Church is a great example of leaving the comfort zone and going in God's direction. Elam Church was meeting in a comfortable, rented facilities at the Polytechnic School in the center of town. They were in a great neighborhood, they had electricity, clean vinyl floors, toilets, all the facilities they needed. The Lord called the leaders of that church to move. The Lord led them to a land in the slums of Lodwar, next to the diesel generators and solar panels that produced the power for the city. This area is called Kenya Power Village. This area is inhabited by illegal alcohol breweries, prostitution, drugs, and such things. There was trash, broken alcohol bottles, piles of human waste everywhere. Many local people were fiercely opposed to the church being built there. The spiritual war was very much real and in your face there. The place literally smells bad. Many church members left the congregation but the leaders followed God and persevered. The remaining church members started cleaning up the area. They started digging holes for the church building posts in mid-2019. The first priority was to build a roof for the shade and shelter from the rain. Sunday school was out, held out back. The Lord was moving though. Even then, people started getting saved. New members joined steadily. Let me point out something here. In the foreground, you see those rock piles. Those are graves. This is a very poor area. These are unmarked, unnamed people. Uh, sometimes they're married at night. They just buried in shallow graves and uh, forgotten. Joyce and I attended services there. It was obvious they needed toilets. They were using one far away at a car wash that was disgusting. We allocated ministry funds for the construction of a four stall toilet and water tank so that they could flush and wash their hands. As they were digging the pit, they found human bones from some of the shallow graves. In African culture, there was a great fear for the ancestors. This is something the witch doctors exploit greatly. When some came across the bones, they ran in fear. Those with faith in God picked up the bones, put them in a box and buried them nearby. As of October 2020, the church is growing steady. There are so many people that phase two was added before phase one was even finished. 
Sunday school is growing even more than in this picture. They now have a place in the shade to meet. Coronavirus was beating up the church in Kenya. The elders had scared the people into believing that if they went to church, they would get the virus and die. The government outlawed the meeting of more than 15 people. People were not going to church even after the restrictions were lifted. The church was dying. The church is needed to get out of the pause mode. Bishop Wilson and we started praying and encouraging each other by saying a revival is needed. The church needs to come alive. The church elders started praying for revival and expecting revival to happen. And revival is happening in this place. People started getting saved. Let me tell you about Rhonda. She came to church on August 9th, 2020. Towards the end of the service, she was crying, weeping so hard with her head lowered that her whole dress was wet. She desperately wanted to get saved. She repented. Oh, did she ever. And she surrendered her life to Jesus. She turned around from a life of prostitution. Drinking alcohol, sleeping only two to three hours at a time, she now sleeps all night. She has the peace of God. She needed a new way to support herself. She is a good cook. Church members helped her find a place to start a small cafe. Ministry funds paid the first three months rent. Now she is supporting herself in a new and Christ honoring way. Her friend wanted to find out what changed Rhonda. So she tagged along with Rhonda to church. Yep, she got saved, of course. The gospel is contagious. Over the last four months alone, over 200 have surrendered their lives to Jesus at this church and other places. People are praying for others to find Jesus. The two women on the left are praying during an all day prayer service. They pray expecting Christ to move in people's lives, and he does. Bishop Wilson is in the center and in the far right. A wonderful man of God, a true servant, fully surrendered to Jesus, gifted as an evangelist. Oh, he's led hundreds to the Lord. The floor is still dirt. They use a portable generator for their sound system. The chairs have to be stored in a secure place after each service because the walls are yet complete, but God is there. God is moving in that church. Turkana Missionary Fellowship pastors. In this picture, Turkana Missionary Fellowship pastors are coming together to pray and praise God for the first time after the lockdown restrictions were lifted. Ministry funds provided the transportation and food to get them together. This was a huge event. It greatly encouraged them and got them charged up to go back into the field and do the ministry that the Lord has for them. In Katali, some of the church members meet monthly for three days of prayer. They start on Friday, they go all day Saturday and they finish Sunday morning and then move right into church. They spend all this time in prayer, scripture reading, praising and exhorting each other. Several share messages. Sometimes they have visiting pastors. They expect God to move and he does. Demons have been cast out. People have been healed and many people have been saved in this church. Our plan is not always God's plan. We had many problems at Caladir. We expected to go there for two weeks and finish. On the first hole, we went more than 150 feet, and then the casing collapsed around our tools, trapping them at the bottom. We had to abandon that hole. We had to jack the casing out and our tools, after a lot of work, we finally succeeded. We moved 75 feet and drilled a second hole. That hole too had many problems. 
but the Lord had a plan and eventually we finished it well. The real story at Caladir is the upper story. As our founder Dave uh, McAlini likes to say, God has something else going on up above that we don't always know. We believe God had a plan and was doing things at Caladir. While we were at Caladir all this time, one example is we met Pedro and his mom Belinda. Pedro slept through the service the first Sunday. We could hear him snoring. The second week, he was still snoring and lethargic. We asked his mom if we could take him to the hospital. She was very relieved. She desperately wanted to take him to the hospital. But this is something she had never done before. They came to Laudwar and he got treatment. The third week, he was running around and doing better. The fourth week, he was lethargic again. So we brought him back to the hospital again. But by the sixth week, he was up and running full speed with his buddies. The only church at Caladir meets under a tree. During one church service, we heard the inspiring testimonies of the women leaders. Three women are the lifeblood of this church. They teach the Bible truths to the kids and other women. While we were there, the attendance went from like zero to 50 people. Jackson, one of our drilling team members, is a gift from God. He is an energetic, positive, God-serving heart. He is fluent in English, Swahili, and his native language of Turkana. He could translate Turkana to English for us. We give thanks to God for meeting our needs and providing the right people at the right time. Prayer is sometimes the only thing they have. They don't have easy access to medical air in the bush. So we pray a lot. They rely on God. Pastors and their families were hard hit by the effects of the virus lockdown. When there was no church for four to five months, there was no income for the pastors. Many of them were struggling to feed their uh, families. So we bought sacks, many, many sacks of corn and oil and other things and um, encouraged the pastors. In these pictures here, we see some examples of a food distribution program. Uh, in the upper left, Nikolai and Bishop Michael are taking food to pastors and vulnerable church members in the bush where that were impacted by COVID and by flooding. The lower left, Pastor Kevin has loaded up his motorcycle and heading out to Napa Dead and beyond. In the upper right, Pastor Steve's loading his Land Rover, heading out, specifically targeting vulnerable widows and pastors. And then on the uh, Bottom right, again, we see two more motorcycles loaded for food, heading out into the bush. In the center, we see vulnerable widows receiving some precious food support. Bible says in Matthew 16, 27, that the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with these angels, and then He will reward each person according to what He has done. These men are examples of sacrificial serving. St. Marion's Children's Home uh, needed additional food this year. Uh, in this particular time, we uh, bought $450 worth of food and face masks. Their monthly support was also increased from $100 to $200 a month. They suffered greatly from the COVID lockdown. There was no school for the children. They weren't able to go about and socialize. Um, another thing that happened sadly was bandits robbed them not once, but twice, taking food, the TV, all the church sound system, and much more. Robbery and curse many fold in Turkana and other places because of the people losing their jobs during the lockdown. Some of the many medical needs that this minute. On this picture 
are just samples and examples of, uh, of some of the many medical needs that we help cover. Most of these events are serious and life-changing when they are healed. They are all very grateful. They recognize God as being the great physician. In the upper left is uh, Gavin. Gavin was a two-week-old two baby, uh, needed antibiotics and other um, assistance. Lower left, Sharon had a severe abdominal pain, uh, required surgery to remove uh, abdominal adhesions. In the middle, Anne had severe back pain. If you could look at the picture closely, the two vertebrae are just rubbing on each other. They're just messed up. Uh, we provided $650 enabling her, her to have surgery. She is now doing well and uh, fully recovering. She's a powerful worship leader in the church. Recently, she's been promoted to chief in her area. Niang was in a motorcycle accident two years ago. He had no money to get it set correctly. COVID slowed things down, but we will be going to, um, we're, we're working on getting him to a referral hospital to straighten his leg. Demarius is an 18 month old baby that only weighs like 10 pounds. Her main thing is she was born during the famine of 2019. Her mom struggled to get nutrition, the baby struggled to get nutrition, and she contracted TB along the way. Now she's getting medical treatment for tuberculosis and she's getting nutritional supplemental food and gaining weight. In order for the churches to open again, each person's temperature had to be recorded when they entered. The ministry purchased 14 of these thermometers and distributed them to various small churches that could not afford them. This year has been a challenging year of just adapting, improvising, and overcoming. We must keep moving on. We cannot stop. Ministry funds were used to replace the control box to the water pump at St. Mary's Children's Home. It was destroyed by lightning. Christine is an amazing woman of God. Born and raised in the deep bush of Turkana, probably has only an eighth grade education. She has determination that does not accept defeat. She is a Christian dynamo for the Lord. She's an evangelist, church leader, and church planter. She shepherds people in the absence of a pastor. She brings sick people to Lodward and comes and sees us because she knows the ministry funds will pay for some medical needs. She speaks only Turkana and Swahili. Nikolai does a great job translating for us. You can see an amazing video on YouTube called Christine's Well. Well worth your time to watch. The ministry provided funds to construct toilets at her church in her village. And she managed the project. I have to give her credit, she did pretty well. Next year, Lord willing, we hope to build a more permanent uh, church structure there. And the picture here, she's learning about receipts, keeping track of the funds and so on. She's very honest, but she has little experience. Uh, Bishop Michael was riding his motorcycle in the bush one day and it broke down. It became obvious it needed major repairs. We fixed his motorcycle up. Then we started looking around and realized that many motorcycles needed to be repaired. This began a motorcycle repair ministry. And I think at this point, we're up to about 10 motorcycles being overhauled. A widow's house in Lacomi was falling down because the termites had eaten up all the structural wood. Church members raised some funds and volunteered to, to do all the labor and build her a new house. Ministry funds brought all the materials needed for construction. Here, they are dedicating it to the Lord. 
Some places we drill are conflict zones, especially along the Uganda border, um, South Sudan. Banditry and rustling are very much active. Our plan to drill at Lumbe Jinnet had to be postponed until the killing stops. Funerals are a very profitable time to share the gospel. People are often open to hearing about God's plan of salvation. Here, evangelist Joel led 14 people to Jesus at this funeral. In 2020, we sponsored only one crusade in January at Mawithi Market. Because of COVID restrictions, we were forced to adapt, improvise, and overcome. Evangelist Joel came up with the idea of mounting a generator, amplifier, and speaker on the back of his motorcycle. We redirected crusade funds to building this system. Additionally, we bought thousands of masks and fuel to make this ministry a reality. Joel would often visit three to four villages per week. The response was huge. Many people came to get a mask and ended up surrendering their lives to Jesus. When the church congregation at Chimichimi raised $400 for a sound system, we allocated $1,150 towards the sound system so it could become a reality. In this picture, many of the Chimichimi church members are waving and what they're saying is thank you to supporters in the USA for helping them to get a sound system for their church. Altogether, ministry funds are used to support and encourage 13 pastors on a monthly basis. All funds received into our account go towards projects, people, and pastors. Joyce and I do not receive any wages or compensation whatsoever. We buy our own plane tickets, we buy our own food. We do not receive any wages. The Drill for Life headquarters is slowly getting finished. We hope to move in in January. On the left side of the big garage door is an office and two storerooms. The upstairs contains four guest rooms, two showers, a sit toilet, kitchen, and dining area for volunteers. We anticipate more visitors coming to participate in ministry opportunities. Lord willing, in 2021, we will drill 18 new wells fully coordinated with the Jesus Film Team. We want to go back to the Kakama Mission Hospital and complete the water system. We hope to build three churches, one at Lola Mangeti, one at Nadapar, and another one at Mumbai. We hope to continue meeting the medical needs as people of we hope to continue meeting the medical needs of people as they cross our path. Evangelism, we're going to keep going any way we possibly can. If we can do crusades, we will. If not, we'll do it on motorcycles and house to house. We want to continue supporting widows and orphans as the Lord leads. We hope to purchase a newer used land cruiser for the drill team. We want to finish building the Drill for Life headquarters, develop, do some development work at Kakama Training Center, and we're praying the Lord will send laborers and volunteers to come assist in this ministry work. Matthew 16, 26 says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. We're challenged by this often. This picture is just an example of what we go through. On this particular Sunday, we were, Joyce and I were planning to go to, out into the bush and, and collect cactus. We wanted to dig up cactus and bring them home and plant them around the house. But Belinda, needed a ride to the hospital. Pedro was sick. And so we had to put our plans all aside and go help Pedro. This is what it means. Sometimes you just have to redirect your plans and do what the Lord leads. 
We give thanks and praise and glory to God for His provision. Our prayer is that all that we do will glorify the Lord and lift His name up. Joyce and I, we want to thank you for listening to this presentation. We, we give all praise to the Lord. We are totally convinced the Lord is moving. We see the harvest in Kenya. There's no doubt in our mind we're supposed to keep going, doing the Lord's work in Kenya. If the Lord is uh, touching your heart and you would like to partner with us, we would very much appreciate it. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you on this day.